High school. It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Whether your high school experience was a delight or a disaster, everyone could agree that high school got pretty stressful at times. In a nutshell, high school exists as a place used to prepare teenagers for inevitable adulthood. While enduring class projects, trips, teams, clubs, and formal events, teenagers are directly exposed to societal traditions and practices. They learn how others see them, what's expected of them, meet their friends, meet their more than friends, and their foes. And those things affect them in ways that largely shape and define their future of adulthood. Looking at the high school films from the 1950s to 1970s, the dominant subject matter consists of cool coaching, bullying, and authority or generational conflict. The following subject matters exist in a unique way, influencing the young characters within these films while being able to resonate with the young audiences who identify and relate to these characters, getting one step closer to the true understanding of the high school experience. The selected films we will be looking at are Nicholas Ray's Rebel Without a Cause, Randall Kleiser's Grease, James Clavel's To Sir With Love, Michael Schultz's Cooley High, Brian De Palma's Carrie, Amy Heckerling's Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and Alan Parker's Fame. Cool coaching is when one individual gives advice to another in order for them to be socially accepted. Throughout all of the films, the character's decision making is heavily influenced by the advice of other peers. The thought is, if one is to listen to their peers' advice on what it is to be cool, then one will be accepted and not be a loner or an outsider. The 1982 film Fast Times at Ridgemont High follows Mark Ratner and Stacey Hamilton as they try to unsuccessfully date and even have sex with one another. Both of their best friends, Mike Damone and Linda Barrett, are giving them constant advice on what to do in the relationship as it moves forward. Ratner and Stacey follow their friends' advice constantly and the audience watches the roller coaster ride of high school relationships. In the 1976 film Carrie, Carrie White is influenced by her mom and children at school. Both her mother and her peers do not show acceptance to her, thus making Carrie an outcast. She seeks refuge and advice from Coach Collins, the girls' gym teacher at her school. Collins gives Carrie advice to go to the school prom, joining all the other students at the end of the year. Carrie is at first reluctant, but deeply hopes for the chance where she will finally be accepted. This cool coaching example is important because it comes from an unorthodox source, an adult and not a friend. The cool coaching ultimately prompts Carrie to go to prom. Though prom ends up a disaster, it is still something Carrie wouldn't have had the courage to do otherwise. The 1975 film Cooley High exemplifies all of this at the beginning of the film, defining what is and isn't cool. At the beginning of the film, main character Preach has a lot of pride about his poetry. Regardless of his neglection to go to class, he sees a bright future moving to Los Angeles to study screenwriting. His friends, however, don't see the same future and look down on his goals. Scholarly article, Constructing the Cool Wall, a tool to explore teen meanings of cool by Daniel Bowen, among others, did research on what is and isn't cool. High school students generally have the ability to define what is cool based on their own parameters as a group. In this case, writing poetry definitely wasn't one of them. Preach's friends try to cool coach him to behave like them instead. Bullying is a recurring theme in high school films and has evolved through the years from a lighthearted subject matter to a rather serious one. In the selected films, the characters bullied are all seen as others or outsiders. In the 1978 film Grease, the T-Birds gang takes pleasure in torturing Eugene. Eugene, although athletic, is ultimately labeled the smart nerd B kid, the complete opposite of the rest of his greasers. In the film, we see the student's treatment of Eugene as comical. Game rule one. All couples must be boy-girl. Yeah, too bad, Eugene! <laughs> all right, all right, all right, come on. Game rule two. We prefer to laugh along with the other characters of the film as their actions and resulting consequences appear to be humorous and non-violent, even though some of them are. Like the teachers, the audience is encouraged to turn a blind eye to such bullying rather than take action against it. What's your name? I watch you. It's Eugene. You're a great picture. Thank you. In Carrie, however, the trend changes. Carrie is the shy, weird, religious girl at school who, heavily under her mother's control, is not permitted to participate in the social atmosphere of high school. Not only is Carrie's bullying omnipresent at school, but at home as well. Carrie truly has no escape. Her mother, Margaret, sees Carrie to be a sin, only to be forgiven through intensive worship, frequently resulting in violence and psychological terror. Bullying takes a significantly darker tone in this film, causing viewers to side with Carrie despite her violent retaliation towards her school. 
This stance is a result of audiences identifying with Carrie. We pity the young girl, but many can relate to her on a more personal level. She cannot escape her oppressive upbringing as she has never known anything else. In contrast to peer bullying, the 1967 film To Sir With Love exemplifies student bullying directed towards authority figures. The inner city students are quick to attack new teacher Mr. Thackeray, not for his skin color or character, but simply for being a teacher, and thus a symbol of authority. As a well-educated working adult amongst a class of high school delinquents, Thackeray is automatically categorized as the outsider by his students, making him an easy target for adolescent pranks and teasing. All right, take your seats. Tension is further added to Thackeray's relationship with his students in outstanding socioeconomic class difference. Thackeray's middle class status and the students' contrasting working class status is apparent in the way each dresses, presents him or herself. In this example of bullying, we feel sorry for Thackeray, who is pushing the young adults to excel in the ever nearing world of adulthood, yet viewers are tempted to relate to the students from personal past experience and standing with peers in rebellion against a stronger force. The conflict between the students and the teacher also relied on masculinity. Brought up by hand by Stephen Wade states that high school men in the 50s in England had trouble proving their own masculinity as they had not participated in the war like their fathers. They then tried to redefine manhood through machismo and being interested and good at contact sports. The fact that Thackeray was the grown male figure in the film also adds to the conflict between him and the character Denham. Denham is trying to prove himself and tries to show his strength over this male figure that he does not embody yet. In periods of rapid social change, generations are likely to develop highly distinctive outlooks and aims which conflict with those of older generations, emphasizing their character as generational units. As explained by author R. Serge Denisoff and journalist Mark H. Levin in Generations and Counterculture, a study in the ideology of music. The 1975 film Coolia High gives us a look into the lives of inner city students in 1964 Chicago. Early in the film, Preach and Cochise regularly cut class regardless of copious absences in the past, much to the chagrin of their teacher, Mr. Mason. Mr. Mason disciplines the two students not out of anger, but tough love. It is revealed in the bathroom scene between Mr. Mason and Preach. Though things do not turn out nicely for both students, Mason's advice to preach seems to resonate. Fame focuses on young and aspiring artists and performers faced with pressures from parents and school faculty. Drama student Doris is consistently humiliated by her overbearing mother. From interrupting her auditions for the New York High School of Performing Arts to booking Doris as talent at a child's birthday party on the weekend, Doris's mother wants the best for her daughter, and though she means well, it does Doris no good. Doris stands her ground by creating her own image by changing her name and pushing out of her comfort zone, indifferent to her mother's protests. On the other hand, highly independent and isolated music student Bruno is not convinced of his own talent despite the overwhelming support of his father. Although he refuses to back down from his work in the disapproving wake of the highly conservative Mr. Sharofsky, the extent of Bruno's insecurity in his electronically composed symphonies is revealed in his negative reaction to his father playing his work for the school. The throwback 1955 film Rebel Without a Cause shows us that 17-year-old protagonist Jim is not new to delinquency, arguably in response to parental conflict at home. Jim yearns for a strong father figure in a life controlled by his mother and grandmother. Jim turns to his father for advice on multiple occasions and encourages him to stand up for himself but is consistently let down by his father's wishy-washy, insecure approach to conflict. 16-year-old Judy struggles for her father's attention, who has trouble accepting her growth into a young woman. It is revealed that Plato, friend of both Judy and Jim, comes from a deeply troubled household. Abandoned at a young age by his father and left under the sole supervision of the housekeeper by an uninvolved mother, he is arrested for shooting puppies on the same night. Judy was arrested for violating curfew and Jim for plain drunkenness. These dominant subject matters have appeared in high school films from the 1950s to 70s. It shed light on these social issues in high school, which has helped viewers relate and identify their problems by rationalizing and explaining the high school experiences. This is all still present in modern high school and high school films. Bullying, cool coaching, and authority or generational conflict hasn't gone away. It's been given new perspectives. Constantly shifting social media platforms, high schoolers are constantly forced to adapt.